<laughs> All right, today what we're going to do is we're going to start chapter 7, or 10, I mean, and there are four standards that we're covering in chapter 10. There's 10A, which is graphing quadratic functions. There is 10B, solve quadratic functions by graphing. There's 10C, solve quadratic functions with algebra. And then finally, solve real life quadratic functions with algebra. Okay? So essentially what we're learning is we're learning quadratic functions. And if you remember a while back, we talked about a quadratic equation has an x squared in it. Okay? And it's the highest exponent is a 2. Okay? So we're really looking at those types of graphs. They are going to be U-shaped. <clears throat> Okay, so when you do these, make sure that your graphs, when you graph them, have the U shape to them. They're not V shaped. They're U shaped, okay, and there's arrows on either end. So, first of all, I want you to open up your iPads and I want you to go and Google in images and I want you to look at real life examples of parabolas. You know, there's, there'll be a ton that come up. <clears throat> I'll write down a few. Okay, so who has an example in real life that's a parabola? Yes. It's a McDonald's sign? Yeah. A McDonald's sign. What else? Yes. Yes. Um, Kayla. see them everywhere. I mean, there's a rainbow, you know, that's a parabola. Now, the thing is, is where it can really impact us is like, um, even outside the window. If you look outside the window, there's that square window, and up above that window, do you see that U-shaped purple thing? 
window opening, mm -hmm. okay? Some people never see that. That's architecture. Well, why did the person design the window to look like that? Because it's a problem, it's different. Okay, they didn't want every house to look the same. They wanted it to look differently. Or sometimes you'll go into a house and the entryway to the house isn't a rectangle. It actually has kind of a curve over the top of it because it's different and it's appeasing to the eye. You see it a lot in architecture, okay? You see it in carpentry. Um, you see it in um, art, absolutely. Um, you see it in fountains. Like, okay, I'm gonna go to Chicago and I'm gonna take a look at the water fountain. Some of the water fountains go and they shoot up really high, right? And it's got a lot of force, but others of them, they don't, they're not as forceful and they go at an angle and they have more of a beautiful arch to it, okay? Depends on the person that made the, the fountain, on what they wanted it to look like. When it shoots the water out, they want the rainbow to kind of take, you know, they want the rainbow piece part of it. Well, then you want your water to do something special, okay? So we see it a lot in a lot of different places, and so being aware of it helps. Now today, we're going to look at y equals ax squared plus c. There are other ones out there. There's another equation that's a parabola. And this is coming. It is out there. We're not going to use this one today, but I want you to know that one like this is out there. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw up my iPad image. It's on 628. You do not need to do this, but I did put it in your notes so that um, you could take a look at it if you wanted to. Okay, we're going to take a look at this. It says a quadratic function is nonlinear function. What's nonlinear mean? Nine. It's not a straight line. <clears throat> nope. And it can be written in standard form. And have you heard standard form before? Yeah. Yep. We just got done with something where we've got the x squared and then the x and then a number, okay? Every quadratic function has a U-shaped graph called a parabola. Again, it must be U-shaped. It's not V-shaped, it's not J-shaped, it's not S-shaped, it's a U-shaped graph, okay? Take a look at the parent quadratic function. The most basic quadratic function in the family of quadratic functions is called the parent quadratic function and it's y equals x squared. The graph of y equals x squared is shown below and you can see it. The lowest part or the highest part, this is called your vertex, okay? And the line that passes through the vertex and divides the para parabola into two symmetric parts is called the axis of symmetry, okay? And you'll notice that the equation for the line is x equals zero. It's always x equals. All right, let's take a look now at this in your notes, okay? So again, this is a picture of a parabola. Um, the vertex you'll notice is right there. If I have a parabola that opens down, the vertex would be right here, okay? And the axis of symmetry goes like this, and it's always x equals a number, okay? And I would put this in your notes because you're going to need it. Okay. Now, an axis of symmetry is kind of like this. When you were a little kid and you were in preschool, do you remember painting your hand a certain color? And then you put it on the side of a piece of paper, and you folded your paper in half, and you smushed it together, and you opened it up. Yeah. There's a butterfly. There's your beautiful butterfly, right? That line in the middle was your axis of symmetry. So they were teaching you symmetry when you were little, 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 right? And the axis just means it's a line that's straight down the middle, and one side must equal the other. that you're going to do today. You're going to graph the function and you're going to compare it to the parent function. Now, if you remember back when we did lines, let's just review for one minute. Remember when we had a line
remember we had y equals x? What was my m? One over one. My b was zero. Remember y equals mx plus b? Okay. Okay, and this was the parent. And then we had the kid off to the side. Okay, and we'd have something like y equals negative 2x. And we said that the m was negative 2 over 1 and the b was 0. Okay, and by doing that, how was the kid different from the parent? Okay, your m was different. Okay, so if your m is different, what did the kid do that the parent didn't? The kid is negative, the parent's positive. What happened to your line? It went, down. it went down from left to right rather than up, right? And if your B or your M was larger, meaning a 2 rather than a 1, what happened to my line? It is steeper. Remember, it had more of a pitch to it, okay? So when I changed the, the parent function a little bit, something happened differently with my line, okay? Same thing goes with today. Um, this is your parent. It never changes, ever, okay? This is my kid, and it will continually change, and you're gonna see what happens to your parabola as you change your parent function. So the step that we're gonna do first <laughs> is drawing my parent function. Now, did they give me the domain to put in? No. So what do I put in? Yep. I would plug in negative 1, 0, and 1. You want a positive, a negative, and a neutral. So I'm going to plug in negative 1. Now, any time you plug in a negative number into something like this, you must have the parentheses. It's non-negotiable. Because without the parentheses, it changes the value. Okay? So if I got negative 1 in parentheses to the second power, what do I get? 1. one. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. You shouldn't need your calculator for that. Okay, now I'm going to plug in y equals 0 to the second power. What do I get? 0. zero. Okay, plug in 1. y equals 1 to the second. I get 1. Now, when you do this on your homework assignment, I would put the parent at the top of your paper and just do the table once. You don't have to do it every single problem because it's redundant. It's the same thing over and over again. So just put that at the top of your paper, okay? Now here comes the kit. What am I going to plug in for values? Yes. Now, what do I do first on this? Do I multiply or do I do my exponent? Multiply. Exponent. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Parentheses, exponent. So y equals 5 to the, I should say 5 times 1. I get 5. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. 5 times 1 is 5. Notice I showed a step in there. Now, doing quadratics, your NWEAs, 
you will see your rig growth will go up just because you have an idea of what quadratics do. That's why when I say you need growth, that's why, because this, this takes you to the next level. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to plot the points. So we're going to go to our graph. Okay, and I'm going to put my parent in. So I got negative one and one. Zero, zero. One, one. And when I graph this, I'm going to make it U-shaped. Okay, and what I mean by that is this is V-shaped. It's very severe. Okay, the V-shape, the graph would be this. It's an absolute value graph. That's what makes it V-shaped. Okay, this is not V-shaped. This is U-shaped, and you got to get kind of get a curve to it. And if you graph it with a V, we're calling it wrong. Yeah. All right, now let's do the kid. Negative one, what? Five. Five. Right there. Zero, zero. No, this is a little tougher to get the U shape. Just do your best. <coughs> Notice I got arrows on the end. Notice that both of them are curved. Yeah, it does. <laughs> okay, now it asks us to compare. Take a look at those graphs. What do you notice about the kid? It's taller. It's taller. It's thinner. It's taller. And you notice it goes up quicker? Okay, that's called a vertical what? Stretch. Yes. Have we seen that before? Yeah. yeah, we did exponentials. One of the reasons why we did that is now it affects what we're doing here. So you'll notice that a lot of the things that we've learned all, you ready? We're just using for a different type of graph. But yeah, it's a vertical stretch because that green goes up a lot quicker than the red. Okay, when I graph the parent, a lot of times I'll graph the parent in pen and I'll do the kid in like pencil, okay? But the parent never changes. Now, some of your graphs you're gonna get, some of them are gonna go upside down, okay? So don't be scared if they go upside down, but they still should be U-shaped. Another thing that I wanna show you is on your tables, okay? Do you notice that these two values repeat? That's a good thing. You want that to repeat. The reason why is that's what gives you that U-shape. You'll notice here, I got a five and a five. You like that, you'll want that. If it doesn't do that, you're in trouble. You did something wrong, okay? Any questions? All right, then we'll take a look at your assignment.